Tamara here. Nice of you to join me. In this video, this is going to be part four of the MDF bookcase um, tutorial. If you want to, if you got to this video by mistake and you want to watch um, parts one, two, and three, I'll put a little playlist just up there in that corner. I should be just giving it a little tickle now. So head on over there if you want to see this one from the beginning if not nice to have you with us and um, we'll get straight in so in our last video what we did was we did um, the front sorry, the inside front cover and we embellished it or we made it up with um, using the uh, nested flag dies from Lisa Horton Crafts but I've repurposed the flag dies as a pocket. So I don't know if you can just about see in there. If I open it up there, that's a little pocket. And we're going to put some tags and things in there a bit later on in the video. So um, I did this one on the video and then I just made up the exact same one for the back. We haven't done anything yet with the, the front and the back covers. We're going to leave that uh, until um, probably um, part five. So let's get down to it. So um, I've already made sort of the bo bones of one mini album up already. And um, we are using the roses and lace paper that come from Stamperia love 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 Stamperia paper it's uh, one of my favorite brands um, so if you haven't um, heard of them or or even got any of their papers then go, go and check them out they are they um, are a, a lovely paper to use um, so what I've what I've done in is I've um, put three signatures in my mini album but instead of using the papers I wanted to see if I could have a go at making my own masterboard backgrounds which I did and I think I've done quite a good job of matching the papers um, with my paints so that's what we're going to do in this video so um, the paints I'm going to use today are another of my favorite brands and that's Paper Artsy Fresco Chalk Acrylic paints um, they come in so many different colors they really do um, it's really hard to choose uh, unfortunately I haven't got all of them but I have got quite a, a good collection so I've just picked up um, a few uh, paints here that I that I've matched with the Stamperia papers so that I can use I probably won't use all of these paints but it just gives you an idea of the palette that we're going to use and as you can see I use this one quite a lot in the state of my bottle so they're the sort of the the colors that I'm going to use and I'm going to use a variety of um, opaques semi opaques and transparent paints now the to give you a short overview uh, opa opaque means that that uh, you put it down and it gives you a full coverage of paint so you um, won't be able to see much of the color that's underneath it semi-opaque is just that it's semi-opaque so you've got it's um, quite opaque so it's quite a good coverage but you've got that hint of transparency as well and then the transparent uh, paint is just that you put it down and you will be able to see the color that you put it down on top of so uh, if you put like for instance in here you can see the the green here that is the that's hey presto and that's a um, transparent paint and you can just see what colors i've put underneath it so it just gives it like a hue on the top and then this here i think is the chalk and that um that's an opaque one so you can't see the colors that i've put underneath it so it gives you a fuller um it gives you a, a fuller truer color so that's just a quick quick overview of the, the, top, the sort of paints I'm using. I will use a brayer. I love using a brayer when I'm making rasterboards. You can see another one of mine that's well loved. Uh, I've got a few different brayers that I will bring in um, because different sizes 
make different gives you a different texture so again um, you can um, mess around with that if you haven't got a brayer you can use a sponge you can use paintbrush you can use um, baby wipes or a wet cloth um, to put your paper your paint down on the, the page it's just to get as much paint on as quick as you can when we're doing masterboards so that's my paint that's my tools now I'm going on to the stamps now I've got a variety of the stamps here that I've bought from Lisa Horton crafts and um, I like back background stamps I love I've got so many background stamps in my collection it's unbelievable I just love 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 background stamps they're one of my favorite you can do so much with those so I'm going to use a variety of stamps to um, put onto my masterboard so as I say I've got um, the back some background ones a postcard one um, this one I may just use parts of I've got a crackle and the um, distressed bubble wrap um, you can't go wrong with a bubble wrap stamp you can't honestly and then I've just got a variety of stencils again that I've bought from Lisa Horton crafts so I've got some uh, I've got another bubble um, but in stencil form some script some ones from Prima another one of Lisa Horton's stamp um, that's medieval uh, stencils that are from Seth Apter so I've got a variety of stencils that I'm going to use as well as now the paper that I'm going to use I've had this in my stash for well over a year and I had a tidy up the other day and I found it and I thought I've got this huge paper stack of papers that I've not even opened um, and do you know what I'm so glad that I decided to have a little bit of a tidy up because I found it this paper and I had a go at using it and wow I can't stress enough how fantastic this is now it's a watercolor as you can see it's a it's a watercolor paper and but you can print on it so if you um like to do um digital pr um stamps will go through your printer no problem it's absolutely fantastic um it is 150 gsm and it comes in 75 sheets now again just go online and search it and a lot of companies will come up um with um stocking it so when i'm working with paints um i tend to try and use gloves if i can i do like my new pajamas i've got fishy ones um i like i like to craft in be comfortable when i'm crafting so yes this is their first outing so it's just my little fishies i quite like them so uh, I will should put an apron on actually and uh, so to protect the front and now I've said that I'm going to get paint all over me I know right so roll my sleeves up okay so let's get down to it now because this is going to be our uh, page in our book we need to do the both of the sides so we'll do one together and then I will um, fast forward the the next one that's on the back just so that you can see you know what I'm doing um, this messy mat that I've got down is um, from again from Lisa Horton invaluable absolutely invaluable it it is non-slip so you put it on your table your glass mat or um, whatever surface you want to protect and it does not move traditional craft mats you have to tape around the edges this you don't it's just it's got like a silicone backing that it's not sticky i can't it's not sticky to the touch as you can say it's not sticky but it tends to it's got like a it's got a stick to it and it won't move now i can move my board that i've got it stuck onto but i it won't come off so again these are fantastic so with my brayer now i have just got myself a just a little paint palette there just so that i can uh, move my paint out of the way after i've uh, finished otherwise i end up with far too much 
uh, on my desk and I seem to have only got a little tiny bit to work in. So let's get some colour down. So I need my brayer. Now let's start with some pink. This one is very berry. So just give it a quick shake. Hopefully it won't be too furred up. So let me just there we go. Give it a thing. Now you don't need very much of this paint. Uh, again, just a little bit, just so that your brayer can go on. If you found you've put too much on, you can take the lids off these and then scoop it back and then just put it in. So um, your paint will go a lot further. So I hope you can see this now. I'm just going to load my brayer up and then. I'm just going to start to apply my colour. Now, I'm not, I haven't got any sort of um, pattern in mind. I'm just getting the colour on my page. As you can see, I've got parts that um, uh, I've got more on than the others. That doesn't bother me. I like that effect. Now, paper artsy paints, if you put it on quite thinly like I've done will dry in 10 seconds if that as you can see it's not not coming off in my hand this here on my mat is um, because that's the, was quite um, thickly that I put it on my paint palette but on my paper no so next color let's get our next color down this one is another of my favorites this is sage and this one is an opaque as well so I'm just um, I might have to really push to get this one out because um, I must be on my fourth pot of this it's one of my favorite colors so just again load your um, brayer up and then again just put on your paint Round, do it there. Okay, so it's getting. I like this sort of weathered paint, paint sort of uh, weathered look that we, we, we're going to create here. Now I'm going to put some brown down. Now this one is chocolate pudding. Another of my favourites, the pudding. It's just empty. Just, just what I'm doing is I'm just um, clearing the nozzle. Okay. So as you can see, I only put a little bit down on that. Okay. Right. So. Okay, sorry now, I'm a bit quiet. It's a, it's one of those uh, tongue sticking out the side of your mouth uh, type of jobs that you kind of do when you're doing, when I'm doing my master boards. Now it might look a bit messy at the minute, but um, once we get all our bits and bobs on, it will st it will bring it all together, and then when you cut it up into uh, the strips again it will be it will look so much different again so just adding a little bit more brown I didn't add enough of the brown colors okay. just wanted a little bit more in the way of the brown okay now I'm going to switch my brayer and I'm just going to use a small one now I'm going to go with let's go back with the green and 
just add a bit more green. Okay, there we are. As you can see, this one is getting this this spray gives a bit more of a um, a solid line. Now you can load your brayer up with two different colours as well. That uh, gives will give you another effect if um, you wanted to um, have a try. If you wanted to do maybe an ombre effect, that would um, work well. So I'm just going to add that bit up there. Okay. So as you can see, it's um, a bit messy. But don't worry, it will come together, I promise you. Right, I might go with a semi-opaque. Let's have a look what this one does. Just to go over the top. Again, I'm not adding too much, and okay, I'll go back with my bra with this one, and just add, just maybe where that brown is, just a little stripe. There we go. Up a bit on the sides. Yes, that's looking, that's just what I wanted. So now we can go in with our stamps. Now, I'm going to use some uh, black archival. Uh, Versamark works um, as well. So, um, whichever you do, if you use Versamark, you need to make sure it's dry. And I'm going to go in with the postcard stamp. Now, I only want a little bit of this, so I'm going to go, I'm just going to ink around and then just um, use my hand to um, get the ink onto my page. Because with background stamps, you don't need to use all of the stamp. Um, you can just ink up parts. And so you've got just... A hint of it coming through. So, so as you can see, I've turned my page around, my paper around. Just going to add a bit more there. I just want it in the background. That's all I want it. So I don't want um, a perfect image. So there we go. So we're going to add a bit more down here. Let's try the bottom part. Let me try this on this side. Move it over a bit. Okay. It's just so that it's in the background of your paper. Uh, of your page. We got, because we can now add some stencil. You can add some more... Um, I'm going to add some more um, stamps. So I'm going to go with this uh, distressed bubble wrap. And just again catching parts of it. Now, if you didn't want to use your ink, you could um, brayer with paint over your stamp and um, use it that way and that works really well but if you do use paint on your stamps you must remember to clean them straight away otherwise it will um, st stick on so just be mindful of that so let's get my script stencil out and sorry script stamp another of my favorites is the script you can't have a I don't feel you can have a master board without having a bit of script on there. Script and circles. Okay. And 
if you're using script try and get it straight there's nothing worse than having some scripts um, on and then it's all wonky it doesn't matter if it's upside down or um, you know on the side so you do it vertical and horizontal but just make sure that it's straight otherwise it's going to bug you so as you can see it's taking shape now but again we that's the, the um, whole point is the layers um, it's how many layers you add um, to your piece you just keep going um, you just keep going and going and going until you are happy with what you've created so I'm going to add some stencils uh, now and I'm just going to use a bit of dry cut and dry foam to apply it with now with my cut and dry foam I tend to cut um, cut it really small my scissors because you only need a tiny bit okay so as I've got this brown I'm going to keep I'm going to just um, use a bit of this brown and I'm going to try and go in some of the white spaces that I've got as you can see can you see that there I'm just going to go in the white spaces now we can do, use different colors as well you don't need to just stencil with one but as you can see it's starting to now take a shape I know I keep saying that I, I just f find this such a good technique okay now bit more I think you're going to add a little bit more so you don't even need to be precise with this you can you just need to um, get some paint onto your sponge and then you know you don't need to even go all the way over it you can just pick parts of the stencil out as I've done so I'm going to leave that with the brown then we'll go with the medieval and I think we're going to use what we're going to use not white so we're going to go with the nugget and again just put it onto my paint mat to get one of my cut and dries um, with the um, paint you need to load your, your um, sponge up but then dab a lot of the paint off because if you put it on too thick you'll end up like I have here you'll end up with it coming out so it'd be, it'll end up like sort of seeping through and um, it's alright on things like this but if you're trying to do a stencil that's going to be your focal point you maybe don't want that to happen so now I'm just rubbing it my, my uh, I've, I've got rid of most of the the paint that's on my sponge so I can then just um, rub it around and then you get more of a softer look so right I think now what we're going to do is I'm going to go in with a bit more paint so I'm going to go in with some um, with some hay presto so this is my, my transparent paint and I'm going to just unblock the blockage a bit more on my Yeah. So I'm going to use this small. Now I picked up some of that white paint. So let's have a look at what that what uh, that gives us. Uh, 
sort of and that gives us a bit more of a, a lime green that's quite nice actually I like that um, but I'm just going to go in with my bigger one bit more green but just with the green and not the white so I'm going to use a different brayer for this and I'm going to get a new uh, paint palette um, one I prepared earlier yeah, just a clean one because I'm going to use um, let's go with the we've got eggshell or chalk let's go with the chalk um, I think this one I've picked up the one that's empty yeah I did okay we won't use that we'll use eggshell we just and open this one okay. I know this one is full it's just very That's my fault. It's not. I there is um, a little um, stopper in the cap that um, goes down and shuts the paint um, the paint uh, pots up. And and sometimes it, um, I'm a bit terrible. I don't clean the tops of my paints off, and I should. So there we go. So. So like with it there, I should maybe clean it off and then that will stop that. So, let me move that one. Okay, this one's a bit bigger, so it's going to give me a bigger coverage. Now, I'm, I don't want it fully over, so I'm just going to tickle the paper with the brayer just so that you get a, sort of a, a warm effect like so and again and I'm going to go down this time and across So let's go in with some more of our stencils. We didn't really use an awful lot of stencils. So I'm going to go in with the white because I want this to really pop. So I'll, say, I'll keep saying white eggshell. We're going to go in with the eggshell and our cut and dry foam again. And again, just tap off the excess of your paint. And now I'm just going to be random because I, I don't want a lot of, I don't want a big blob of um, uh, pattern all at once, so like that. So it just really just brings everything together. And I'm going to turn that round. Again, just dot it about, do a bit up here like so I, I just want to get some more stamps down so let's get my script stamp, stamp out again now there we go okay 
so okay I'm gonna add a bit more some more stencils to this um, I just want it a bit more some more depth to it now we can use um, ink you can use um, your archival or your um, paints through this um, I think I might go with let me have a look I want to bring out a colour um, let's try a bit of, of black and see where that takes us I can always um, cover over it if I don't like it um, I'll just use a, a new one I did have one that I'd already had for no, I can't seem to find it so let's just put um, a bit of black down and see what that looks like yes just a little hint in the sort of uh, it's not a um, very um, strong it's just very muted which I quite like it just gives that a bit more um, sort of faded into the background type of look my um, cut and dry foam is I think it's given up the ghost there we are. a bit more right, just want a couple more over this side but I'm going to have to get some more cut and dry that's uh, giving up the ghost Find. No. Um. There we go. Sorry about that. Just to scratch, uh, reach across. A bit smaller. There we go. This might be a bit better. Now that's just kind of lifted the colour out a little bit uh, in that so I'm quite happy with that actually so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now fast forward the rest of the video and um, I'm just going to I'm going to finish the bag and then we can then go um, we can then start to cut it up to make into our books
finished our background now um sorry our back but our master board and you can see how different they look so you've got this one is very quite more vibrant and then this one here is more subdued and with the pops of the black in there as well so say it just goes to show how different you um can get your boards using virtually the same sort of colors um you i could carry on and carry on i might just actually put some script in that bit there so I'm not too happy with that and I was going to do some lines wasn't I um I said okay that's better that's this is going to make it um, just pop a little bit more yeah just wanted to bring some of this script back into the foreground there we go so I'm happy with that now I'm really happy with that right so now we have to cut so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just have a tidy up because I've got paint everywhere and then uh, when we come back we'll talk about what we're going to do next Okay, we're on to our next uh, part of our book now. Now, as you can see, I've done um, the front and the back of my um, board, my paper. I've done a couple more as well that I've already chopped up ready so that um, we can then get them put into our book. So as you can see, I've chopped up a few different ones and see how different they now look once you chop them up um they just look so nice i love this i love this technique i really do so right so we are going to need some craft card and so we can make our um sort of little notebook closed um for our signatures so as a cover for our signatures so i've gone ahead and cut two out already you will need three so you'll need to cut out three of these so the measurements you'll need are five and a half by three and a quarter okay so three and a quarter like so and then you're going to score this at two and three quarters so score at two and three quarters down like so and then fold and then that should create a nice little cover for our signatures now you don't need to do this if you don't want to if you just want to have the pages in there i think it just gives it a nice little touch to have um, them look a little bit like a little notebook so you'll need to cut three of those once you've done that we're going to decrease the measurements by a quarter of an inch i did do a one eighth of an inch but what happened was the um edges were sticking out of my um of my notebook and i didn't really like that so we're going to go with a quarter inch um decrease and you can see it just um gives it a nice look on the inside to make it look a little bit more like a book so the measurements you'll need now i'm going to cut so that it is a portrait um so i'm going to cut on the portrait not the landscape um side so let me just get my cutting mat back to how it should be so again from this side so we're going to cut this at um three inches just double check yes cut this at three okay by five and a quarter um let me just get this right uh yes five and a quarter okay so then that should give a nice border around the top 
and then one round the bottom okay like so and then we just need to fold them over and you can score them if you want to which I think you score at two and three and uh, two and five eighths yes two and five eighths would be your score but this is quite um, easy card to um, sort of fold so again we're going to do um, our which would be three and then I'll do the next one so this one will be three uh, and you'll have a bit left over and then the long measurement is five and a quarter left over and again five and a quarter okay. now the bits these bits here that you've got left um, don't throw them away because we can use them with our tag to make our tags with you can make them to decorate the, the your books with so don't throw them away it's all usable so I'm just going to score these these and score these ones and then what we all need to do once we've done that so one two three so that's one book and then I might get another one no that's just a bit too small yes I won't get any out there um, and then that's another book and then I've just cut these ones up and then we'll have, I'm hoping, our, um, so five and a quarter, five and a quarter by five and a quarter. Just fold these over and again. One, two, three. Oh, I didn't cut this side, so we want three inches. already cut yes one two three one two three and I think I'm missing one but never mind we'll sort them out in a minute okay so we'll work on one and then we can um we will see what we're going to do from there so I'll bother that one okay so um you'll need to ink round the edges now with the one that I'd already done what I did was I inked in, bra in um, brown archival and then I just slightly went over the top with black just to give it a bit more uh, of that warm sort of look um, type of thing. So it's entirely up to you what you do. You can do that if you want to. I'm using a potting uh, soil. Let me just move this out the way. And I just have a little slurp of my coffee. You see, that no, looks very dark. I, I do have a lot of milk in my coffee. I've been um, about six months now. I've um, not had any dairy milk. I've gone on to Oatly and um, I actually prefer it now. I have it in everything. Um, it's, it's really nice. It's creamy as well. You just have to remember to shake the um, carton. So, let's me just get a, an old piece of paper. 
piece of cut and dry, that one will do. And my black, my, oh, sorry, my brown and my black. So that's the black one and the brown one. So all you'd need to do is ink around all the edges. Okay, I will speed this bit up, but I'll do one and then we can I'll show you what I mean. Now, the more you go around it, the, the deeper your colour is going to be. Now, the reason I'm using archival instead of the your traditional um, distress inks um, is I. I love distress inks, they're really nice, but they are reactive with water, so they're very good, uh, and things like that. I just like, especially over paint, um, myself, my personal preferences, I like prefer to use a bit of archival, which is the permanent ink. Now, you can get the, um, the um, archival in some of the distress colors which i think i did use um on it may have been the one that i've done before i think i used ground espresso on that one um i think i did um yeah i'm thinking back now i think i did yes so but it doesn't matter really i mean you can use any brown colored um ink that you may have so it's just what I'm using today. Okay, remember you need to do both sides of your page and the spine bit as well. Okay, so that's then you can see how that then changes the look it, it of your page. Um, paper that you've done and um, sort of how it you can it just looks so yummy it really does I, I can't um, stress how good this is and then as you can see I'm just going to edge it in black can you see now that depth of color that it just adds it adds sort of a like a shading to your page as well just frames it a bit more right I've now inked all my pages and I've also inked the outside of my notebooks as well it's very rough done but that's not going to matter because once we cover them with our either our master boards that we've made or we can use the roses and lace paper um, to cover them it will just blend in as you can see there so now we can put them it all together so you need your book that we've been working on it seems ages since we were uh, had this book out so we can just start by threading oh, well, let's use the, uh, this one um, by threading our notebook uh, through our elastic or um, cord whatever you have used and we just thread that through so that it sits in there nicely like that and then you can go and add the pages as well and then they fit in and then this next one Can be a little bit tricky but we'll get there in, in eventually there we go there's that one and then we can put these in and yep yeah, we've got three there and then the last one like so so then that's all our pages inside you can just see that there as we then put them together what I think we'll do is we will cut out some of the paper to mat and layer um, our front and back and inside covers and then we may think about we might do a little tag or something to put in there so I'm just going to use um, I won't use my off cuts because I've got lots of off cuts here that come from the, pa um, the pages so don't throw them out because they can 
be used as I said for tags or um, just as um, backgrounds for other if you do collage or anything like that so we're going to then just do our matting layers to fit onto our um, books now let me measure that just to get the measurements um, oh ruler do you know what? I have three or four rulers and I can never ever find one of them. I need somebody to organise me. Okay, so we're going to... So that was two and five eighths. So depends on if what you want if you want to go with a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch I think on these I'm going to go for eighth an eighth of an inch so I'm going to cut mine down to two and a half by three okay so two and a half by three let's get um, So I'm just going to use some offcuts that I've got here, um, just so that I can use them up. So this needs to be three, because that's my length. So three by two and a half. Let's double check if my measurements are correct. Yep, that looks good. I like that very much so so you can go ahead and cut um, all of them out using those measurements and uh, when we come back I'd have done mine okay I've cut and edged all of my um, layers that are going to go on the front of my little mini uh, notebook like that and then um, actually yeah this was the one I was going to put on the front I like this uh, this script at the bottom here so that's the thing you kind of um, see different parts when you cut your papers up a little bit smaller you see different images and you get a different perspective of things so that was quite good so I'm going to use that and put that in there like so and then I'm going to do this side as well And this goes on the back so that's four pieces so you'll need four eight twelve of the little of the um, the little papers that you're going to cut out you'll need twelve so it's four per book uh, and you can use like off cuts as well so then we can put it in like so and then we've just we're going to do the front in another video but then that's our book in size looking oh do you know what i forgot to do oh sugar i was going to put some ribbon around wasn't i to help get keep it closed um i wonder if i could put i could use a paper clip actually let's have a look we could decorate a little paper clip and there we could just use a little paper clip to keep them closed maybe put um a little charm or something dangling from them that might be a good idea but just to keep them closed for the moment we can just leave our paper clips in there you could put them up like so you can get bigger ones as well so that they maybe all 
kind of go down in a line. That looks actually quite nice. I quite like that effect. So that then is that for this video. Oh, this video has taken me near enough all day to film. It's uh, been one of those where I've just had problem after problem and um, I eventually got there in the end, as they say. So, thank you for sticking by me uh, through this series of videos. I really hope that you've enjoyed them. If you have, please, please give me a thumbs up. Um, I'm very much appreciated. If you can um, leave me a comment as well, that would be nice. I, I love reading everybody's comments uh, uh, online. If you can become a subscriber, if you're not already, that would be brilliant. I would love it if you would uh, come and join um, my crew as they can say um, and if you can then hit that notification bell that uh, comes up next to the subscribe button that way whenever I post a video online you will get a notification uh, in your email so you don't miss anything um, I'm on social media so, so come and follow me on any of my um, pages over there just um, type in tomorrow morning and I should come up I'm going to um, upload this video now and get on and start filming part five and part five we're going to look at we're going to decorate the front and the back covers and then do finish our closure on there and then uh, we may embellish a couple of pages in the book um, as we go along oh and don't forget we've got to do tags as well so yeah so thanks again for sticking with me and um, stay safe and I'll see you on the next one bye